So in this video, we will look at some examples of moving boundary work and how we evaluate moving boundary work. Before we do that, uh, we would like to notice that uh, this, uh, what we wrote as delta W B as equal to P times D V, right? And uh, this we write as delta W B and not as D W B. Why? Because I could take any number of paths to go from 1 to 2, right? And if I uh, took this path instead of this, then the area under the curve would be, would be different, right? So then I would have a different work interaction, moving boundary work interaction than if I had, um, if I had gone from 1 to 2 this way, right? So it's a path dependent process. And that's why we write delta WB and not DWB. It's a path, it's an inexact differential. And uh, WB, of course, uh, is a path integral from PDV. Right? Uh, let's look at some typical examples. So the first is a constant volume process. There are many situations where the volume remains constant and uh, that's a constant volume process, also sometimes called an isochoric process. And obviously it's a trivial case because WB is equal to P times DV and DV is zero. And so therefore the moving boundary work is zero. Right. So essentially what this tells us is if the volume does not change, then the moving boundary work is just 0. Right. We also sometimes have a constant pressure process. Then uh, I can write this as uh, WB equals integral PDV 1 to 2, right? And uh, since this is a constant, I can pull that out. So that's just P naught times delta V, right? So that's just P naught times V2 minus V1. <clears throat> right? So these are two easy cases where we simplify the integration. Uh, in one case, the work done is just zero. And the another case, the moving boundary work is uh, P naught times V2 minus V1. And then uh, we have, uh, when does this happen? So for example, I can have a piston cylinder arrangement where the piston is open to atmosphere, right? And this is uh, P is equal to P atmosphere, right? And I can have an external source which is uh, supplying energy, let's say a heat interaction that the system has during the process, right? So, but uh, let us say the friction, uh, the piston is frictionless and so therefore the pressure inside and the pressure outside are the same and they say stay the same throughout the process. Throughout the process, the pressure inside stays at atmospheric pressure, right? And so therefore, I can pull that out of the integral and during this process, uh, I take the final volume and I subtract the initial volume multiplied by the P, P naught, I get um, the work done, right? And I can also write this as uh, uh, V 
is equal to m times v where this is volume and this is specific volume and m is the mass right so i can write this as wb equals integral 1 to 2 p uh, m times 1 to 2 integral p dv <coughs> sorry right i can pull m out why i can pull m out because this is a closed system right so i can pull m out of the system so let me write that step down Why is it a constant? Because it is a closed system. So, I cannot have any mass exchange, mass cannot enter or leave the system and so I can pull that out W B equals M times integral P D V. And this is true by the way whether or not pressure is constant right. For all closed systems I can pull mass out and I can instead write in terms of specific volume rather than write in terms of total volume. Why is this useful? Because often times I know the specific volume because I refer to property tables right and property tables give me specific volume they do not obviously give me the volume because all property tables typically have only intensive properties and not extensive properties right. So sometimes I do have an advantage by working uh, in intensive variables in specific volume rather than actual volume right. So then I can write this as m times p naught times uh, v2 minus v1 for a constant pressure process right. <clears throat> so remember that uh, this is valid whether or not I have a gas whether or not I have a liquid. So it does not matter it has no assumptions about what this substance is the only assumption is that the total pressure remains constant. So I could have a vapor that does not behave like an ideal gas I could have a liquid vapor mixture that also does not behave like an ideal gas or I could have a gas that does behave like an ideal gas. In all of these cases as long as I have a pressure constant I can write this right and so it is not restricted to something that is an ideal gas. Um, what we are going to do next is restricted to something that is an ideal gas. So let us say isothermal expansion of an ideal gas so as we have seen in the properties of pure substances uh, one of the properties of an ideal gas is that it obeys the rule p1 v1 equals n p sorry p times v equals n times r times t where this is the number of moles this is the universal gas constant and this is the temperature in Kelvin right. And so if I have an isothermal what that means is the temperature does not change right and so therefore I can write t is equal to some t naught which remains constant and so I can write this p times v this is the number of moles. In a closed system the number of moles does not change and then the universal gas constant of course does not change and in an isothermal process the T does not change either. So none of the right hand side terms are changing and so therefore I can write P times V is a constant and let me call that constant C right and so I can write P as C by V right. I can also write um, V as uh, 
as m times v and this is a constant. So, I can write this uh, p as uh, some other constant c1 divided by the specific volume small v, right. <coughs> So again uh, the boundary work Wb is integral P dV. So I can write that as uh, I can substitute and because this is a constant I can bring it out and write it as uh, V2 by V1, <coughs> right. And what is this C? This is P times V. So, this is equal to P1 V1 log V2 by V1 also equal to P2 V2 log V2 by right. So, this is, but this is specific only to ideal gases, right, because we assume ideal gas, we assume that this holds, right. So, if I have for example, water vapor at one atmosphere pressure and about let us say 105 degrees, then this is not valid, I cannot use this. Why? Because water vapor in those conditions does not behave like an ideal gas. So, first I have got to make sure that it does behave like an ideal gas and that this is valid. If this is valid, then I can write the moving boundary work as, uh, uh, as this expression here, right. <coughs> 